Hello, my name is Anna Kapitani Tabluna. Key in the most is some eight two thirty seven four nine. Uh, I will now present the intervention of semi autonomous underwater vehicle. So, what is semi autonomous underwater vehicle? SRUV or semi autonomous underwater vehicle is an underwater robot that I use to monitor the underwater environment. The additional function of these TVs is to record some other environmental parameters such as pH level, temperature of the water, and salt content. Why we choose semi-autonomous and not the autonomous? The autonomous underwater vehicle, which is AUV, must carry its own batteries, um, which this battery must be charged often, and it will affect the weight of underwater vehicle. Also, the autonomous underwater vehicle are more likely to be lost in the sea. There are two operational modes of SAUV, which is towing mode and remote control mode. The remote is the vehicle is stuck behind a boat, while remote control mode is the operator is using a remote to control the vehicle. Assalamualaikum, my name is Faradi Babinti Irahim and my matrix number is 200928. So for this uh, topic, buoyancy, I'm going to present my part which is literature findings. Okay, so for the first part, I'm going to talk about a little bit about history of buoyancy. So how Archimedes discovered the concept of buoyancy? Okay, Archimedes was related to one of the city's king, Hero II, in a Greek in a Greek colony in Sicily, Italy. He studied in Alexandria, Egypt, and he spent the rest of his life back in his hometown. The royal court ordered him to determine the weight of the gold in the king's crown, and when he was in his path, he talked he talked about the challenge and a talk has suddenly occurred to him um, that the buoyant force of a submerged object is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by it. He was too he was too excited that the legend goes that he jumped out of his bath and ran naked through the Syracuse Sy streets and shouted Eureka, Eureka, which means I have found it. So Archim Archimedes has found an enormous principle that is useful to everyone in his time and also in, in this present time. Next, I'm going to talk about uh, Archimedes principle. So the principle of um, or the principle of buoyancy say that the buoyant or lifting force of an object submerged in a fluid is equal to the weight of the fluid that, that, that has been displaced. This concept is uh, known as Archimedes principle and named after the Greek mathematician itself that discovered it. Okay, that's all for my presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Zell Jacob, my matrix number is 202689 and for today I'll be talking about a group project for Fluid Mechanics 1 and the title is about the buoyancy. So my job specifically was to uh, talk about the conceptual of the semi-autonomous underwater vehicle which is the conceptual of the system. So let's start off with the buoyancy control. So the buoyancy control is mainly to submerge and surface. Secondly, it is controlled by the compressed air and water, and it is used to change the orientation of the vehicle. So how is it used? So firstly, it uses two ballast tanks at each side of a compressed streamlined body. Secondly, it uses to control buoyancy in the horizontally compressed uh, way, direction. In the vertically compressed mode, only the upper tank is compressed with air. That's how it floats. And the vehicle has zero buoyancy, then its density is equal to the density of seawater or the uh, surrounding liquid. So the formula of buoyancy is, Boeing force equals to weight and vehicle weight equals the product of density, gravitational acceleration, and volume. But this approximation still depends on the content of the water containers, the salt content of seawater, and the density of air left in the compressed air balloon. So the whole concept is when the overall density is lower than that of the surrounding water, it is either floating or it has been resurfaced. And when the overall density is greater than the surrounding water, the SAUV is sinking, and that's when the ballast tanks are flooded with water. So let's go on to the stability. So this SAUV has two stabilities, which is the surface stability and the submerged stability. So for the surface stability, when the surface SAUV tilts, the center of buoyancy V shifts to a new position, V1. And the meta center, if it is above the center of gravity, 
it creates a writing movement that brings the SEUV back to upright position. So that's for the that's for the surface stability. So for the submerged stability, in the submerged conditions, the underwater vehicles operate in a condition where the weight and buoyancy are always equal. And this condition is called the neutrally buoyant condition. And for underwater vehicles, there are two cases. First, when the center of gravity G is below the center of buoyancy. And secondly, when the center of gravity is above the center of buoyancy. So you can see, as you can see in the diagram here, there are two figures. The figure on the left is when the center of buoyancy is above the center of gravity. So that's when it's stable and it creates a restoring couple. But on the right, the center of gravity is above the center of buoyancy. So that's when it creates an unstable condition. And this is also creates an overturning couple. So I think that's all from me. Thank you for listening. Hi, my name is Ashwindran son of Marimutu. My matrix number is 202792. Today I'll be presenting about the 3D model of our system for our student-centered learning SEL project for the subject EMM3305, Fluid Mechanics 1, Session 1920. I am from Group 2, where buoyancy was our topic of study. First and foremost, let's have a look at the original model that my group came up with. This, uh, this is the original 3D model design that uh, my group came up with. Uh, have a look at the figure one, the original model. This was not chosen as our final model because uh, it is very inefficient. By looking at the model itself, we can tell it's very inefficient. Uh, it is inefficient because it cannot travel through small spaces at the seabed due to its height. Its height is a lot that it cannot pass through obstacles easily. Not only that, it cannot change its its cause of direction underwater easily due to the absence of fins. Without the presence of fins, it will be very hard to control the motion of the model underwater. This is because its motion cannot completely depend on the thrust from the propeller and buoyancy from the ballast tanks. Hence, we modify the model to obtain a more appropriate and functional prototype. So let's have a look at it. Moving on, this is the modified model. After modifying and redesigning the original model, we obtained this modified model, uh, which is a better version of the original model. So as you all can see, the figure two shows the modified model with labeling. We can rely upon this model because we believe it is very efficient as we can control and monitor its movement underwater. Not only that, it can travel even deeper into the sea without any problem due to its uh, slim design. You can see its surface area is all very nice. The height has been lessened and this considered a good model. So as you can see, there are five main components that make up this model, which are the compressed air tank, the fins, the propeller, batteries and propulsion compartment, and the camera and electronics. This uh, these components are labeled as shown in figure 2. The buoyancy of the vehicle is controlled by regulating the volume ratio of water and air in ballast tanks. The fin decreases the drag force on the vehicle. It is very important to keep the drag within the limits. The propeller is a rotating fan like structure which creates power thrust to propel the ship. Batteries and propulsion compartment, compartment are to power up and provide energy source to the vehicle. For the functionality of the vehicle, a camera is attached to carry out underwater inspections. So this is the final modified model. Lah. Moving on, uh, this is the autographic view of the modified model for our semi-autonomous underwater vehicle. So as you can see, it comprises of top view, front view, and the side view with dimensions with precise dimensions with which we came up with. So that's all from me. Thank you. A very good morning. My name is Sashun Rajkumar and my meeting number is 200309. Today I would like to present our fluid mechanic presentation. 
and the concept that we've chosen is semi-autonomous underwater vehicle so the uh, uh, to simplify everything uh, the vehicle essentially used to uh, monitor the marine environment in Malaysian coastal uh, areas uh, I mean in our report we have discussed about all the problems that our country is currently facing in terms of uh, coastal zone management so this will help uh, the uh, this will help the government to uh, to monitor the marine environment and also make uh, preventive measures because uh, uh, currently uh, human divers are being used to monitor the environment so this will replace the human divers which is more uh, uh, effective I think yeah so let's get into the presentation I will uh, I will be presenting the result and discussion okay so the main concept that we're using is uh, buoyancy force and also uh, Newton's second law. So as you can see, F equals to MA and buoyancy force is equal to rho VG density times uh, volume times gravity. Okay, so we're using both equations to calculate the maximum fraction of the vehicle that can be steel for it to uh, float because uh, any vehicle we any any vehicle that we are manufacturing, we need to use the appropriate uh, material to make sure it's uh, uh, optimum durability and also its uh, efficiency. So in this case, we're using steel because steel has uh, resistance against uh, corrosion and also it has a uh, high durability due to the combination of uh, carbon and also iron. Okay, so here we're using the both steel and water. So the significant weight of steel is eight and water is it's actually eight thousand and one thousand for water. I simplified the values just to uh, make it uh, easy for people to understand. Okay, so the buying force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. Okay, so we're going to let X as the percentage volume of the vehicle. Okay, the percentage volume of the uh, steel. Okay, so this uh, is the overall volume of the vehicle is equal to the volume of the steel and also the volume of air because uh, the vehicle definitely has ballast tanks and ballast tanks is comprised of air and also the, the metal. Okay, so... Uh, substituting the values and we can see that we get a value of 0 0.125 which is equivalent to 1 8 so so we can see that the maximum allowed percentage of steel is 1 8 of the entire volume of the week which means that we need to make sure that the uh, usage of steel is only 1 8 of the entire volume and we have to use uh, other material uh, such as plastic and also uh, carbon fiber uh, in order to make it even more strong and uh, uh, effective. Okay, so simply put, you can see that the buoyant force becomes larger than the weight of the uh, displaced liquid, it will float. When the buoyant force becomes lesser, as the weight of the uh, vehicle becomes uh, dominant, the object will sink. So, this is how the entire uh, vehicle works. It works based on the concept of buoyancy. So this is regulated by the presence of ballast tanks. Okay. So the, one of the advantages of the design is the versatility because here we can see that we have two ballast tanks. We can uh, uh, manipulate these two ballast tanks in order to make it either horizontally uh, movable or vertically movable. Okay. So this is the uh, the uniqueness of our design. Okay. So that is all from me. Thank you. Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, okay, so uh, I would like to present my part, which is the recommendation for improvement. Uh, so uh, there are many, as we know, when we are working on certain subject, when we're working on certain certain uh, certain project, we have we should have some recommendation for the improvement or some suggestion. For the project or some uh, to to do the improvement for the future, for the future. So uh, so the given model and ideas of this autonomous underwater vehicle have a lot of features from an aspect such as electronic system, its subsystem, and the, the physical mechanism and everything. So, but in this, but in the, but in our, in this our AUV or autonomous underwater vehicle. 
we are focusing uh, we are focusing on we are focusing on the on two on the buoyancy uh, on two parts which is the uh, the tow in tow mode i mean uh, uv working in tow mode which is the towing mode and also the towing mode and also what uh, so the uh, towing mode and the remote control mode so it uh, already been explained by my by my uh, by my friends so uh actually uh, my suggestion for this uh for for this whole report is we should consist more details on this 3d model actually and so it can be visualized by uh by the by the reader more more specifically so and, and also they, they should know all the function throughout the 3d model so even if we, if we send it to the to the maker to do the model by the 3D print or everything, it also can be done. So, related to the aim and focus of the report, so uh, we are looking actually, we are suggesting for making a prototype which can be used underwater. Uh, that can be used uh, by prototype of the, uh, by, by towing mode. So, it can be used by the uh, scientists of the environmental scientists to do the experiment or everything. So, that's, that's very important, lah, the, the prototype. So, uh, for the remote control, actually, we are suggesting in doing the. Of course, the remote control have a very complexity, uh, very complex, in we uh, and a lot of mechanism to do, and we suggest to make an image recognition algorithm for underwater vegetation. So, underwater vegetation. So, uh, we all know vegetation. Uh, we have many, many living things underwater. So, uh, there is, uh, and, and lastly, we are looking for the, uh, we are recommending for the testing of the underwater to test all the system of substance as I mentioned above. So, that is, that is all I think for the recommendation for our improvement and we are looking for uh, any other uh, improvement in our future projects. So, thank you. <coughs> so, now I will present the conclusion of SAV. The SAV was designed to monitor the environment underwater. And SAV is also called unmanned underwater vehicle, which is it could be easier to carry out an operation because uh, the operation was quite dangerous for human to do. The Borussia Control of the Semi-Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, which is the mechanism is based on the two controllable ballast tanks. So that's all from me. Thank you.